hello guys welcome to my channel from the title you already know what's up <laughs> we are going to be preparing bobolo today without too much talking let's jump straight into the video we have here some fresh cassava you can see how juicy it looks so i'm just going to go ahead and you can peel it any way you want this is the easiest way to peel your cassava After peeling your cassava, we have to wash it. This is so important. You have to wash your cassava properly to ensure that there is no sand or gravel. Remember it's tuber and sometimes it contains soil. At this point, I cut the cassava and I try to remove the roots uh, found in the middle of the cassava. I just removed this because this part is not useful and since I won't be needing it, so I'll remove it at this stage. After my cassava has been properly cleaned, I'll just go ahead and put water in a bowl. Then I put my cassava. Just trying to make sure the water reaches at the top, like the cassava is properly soaked in water, so it gets soft and fermented. This process is very important. You want to ensure that the water is or uh, is over, is totally over the cassava. So I'm using the foil paper to cover this back because this bowl doesn't have a lid. You can use a pot. You can just be, comfort be comfortable to use anything of your choice. Just be sure the water is going to cover the cassava. So it's very essential that it covers it totally. And also the utensil you use is covered. So you ease fermentation. After three days, I checked the cassava and as you can see, it's still hard. So I'm going to keep that for a few more days. Again, I made water fufu, I think two months ago and the cassava was kind of uh, better. I mean, it got softer in four days, but this is acting all different. That's just to tell you that they behave differently. So you just have to work, work with what you have. So I cannot tell you to soak your cassava for four days or five days because I'm not too sure of how it will cooperate. As you can see it's looking softer so it's ready for preparation i'm just going to smash it with my fingers to remove the root if any and if any hard one i'm just going to remove it and smash it with my fingers i'm just doing so it will be easier for my blender to crush it but just make sure it's soft and well fermented for you to blend so that it will give you that aroma even though it doesn't smell too nice Next, we are going to be blending it and immediately I'm going to squeeze it in a white cloth. Guys, I'm doing this because my blender is not so strong. So I used quite more water to blend it. If you have a strong blender like Ninja or a very good blender, you will face the kind of problem I'm facing over here. But the blender wasn't too strong. So I added more water for it to blend properly because at the end of the day, I want a smooth paste. So I'm just going to squeeze the water gently and make sure it comes out so that I can have the texture that I want. So I'm just going to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Then I check to see if the texture is what I'm going for.
I'll go ahead and prepare my foil paper and baking paper. I will just cut it uh, to suit the size and shape of my bobolo. Back in Cameroon, we have access to plantain leaves or whatever leaves they use to tie the bobolo. But over here, <laughs> I don't have any choice, so I will make do with this. Most important thing is it's gonna come out like the bobolo that I know. So this is a rope I'm going to be using. I will just find my way around it. I don't have a choice. <laughs> so I will just unwind it and reduce the strands to make it easier for me to tie. So I will start by molding my dough. No need to talk too much. You guys can just see from what I'm doing. But again, whatever quantity you put here, that's the quantity of bobolo you're going to have. So if you want slimmer bobolo, you're just going to reduce the quantity of dough you put. So I'm just going to tie the ends to secure it then I tie it all the way to the other side and as you can see so I'll just basically do that to all of them. Bobolo is one of those meals that if you get it, it's so easy to prepare but I, at the same time, I consider it like one of those VIP meals like seriously, I was really craving for Bobolo, that's why I made this I said it's a VIP meal so maybe next month, I'll just hit two and eat with some grilled fish and enjoy my life, please <laughs> As you can see our bubble has been properly tied it's looking so cute <laughs> so i'm just going to put that in a pot that has been preheated and i have this uh, an iron steel i have inside that's just going to help it to prevent it from burning in case it's to burn it shouldn't just burn my uh, the foil paper so that iron in there is going to protect it i also use that for baking so i just felt to explain to you guys why I'm using it. In Cameroon, what is normally done is at the bottom of the pot, they always put plantain stems. Is it plantain leaves? Or plantain leaves at the bottom so it doesn't burn your bubble or it doesn't burn whatever you're steaming in the pot. But I'll be using this aluminium iron here because it's just going to do the magic for me. I cooked the bubble for 45 minutes and it was done. I was so in a hurry to go to work. I didn't even take proper images or proper videos of the bubble but this is it. You just have to peel it and enjoy yourself. Of course, I have pictures here and yeah, if you enjoyed this recipe, please give it a thumbs up. If you love this video, please, please, please <laughs> subscribe to this channel and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. And by the way, I'll be dropping my Igusi pudding video immediately after this one. <laughs>